Hi there, Lindsay here. Today I wanted to do a series of curriculum close-ups for you. In my first video, I shared what we were using for our first slash second grade curriculum for the year 2017-2018, but I realized it was extremely difficult to see being so far away from the camera. So I decided that I would go through and divvy out each of our subjects and show you our math, our language arts, our history, and our science as a closer up version of that video. So you can actually see the curriculum a little more clearly. This is going to be at the beginning of each of those videos. So forgive me if I am repeating myself. The, um, and so I wanted to walk you through all of what we have got for Caitlin's curriculum for her first slash second grade year. Let's take a closer look. So our close-up of our math curriculum this year, we have Saxon Math Level 2, and I've got the Teacher's Edition, I've got my Student Workbooks Part 1 and 2, and then I've got the Home Study Meeting Book. In the, my, let's start with my Student Workbooks. So these look awfully thin because I took them to the print shop, had them chop off the binding, and I've already divvied out all of these lessons into Caitlin's file system for our crate of 36 weeks of lesson work. So this is pretty much just the remnants. There are teacher pages that come in the first workbook that have things like the actual assessments for oral assessment and for your um, written assessment as well as your fact sheet log. I don't plan to use those. Here we have the home study meeting book, and this has a number chart in the back. It's got line number, number lines, counting strips. It's got lots of things, lots of graphing things to look at. It gives you a calendar. It gives you the weather um, tracking uh, graph for each of the months. This particular portion of the meeting book is extremely frustrating. The whole book for us is not something that we wind up using consistently just for the sake of um, our sanity. <laughs> you go through each day and you've got um, the meeting strip, which we've got copied here. But basically it wants you to write down the day. It wants you to write down how many days until this point. It wants you to go in and do a, um, a shape pattern count the money, tell what time it is, what you're going to do at a specific time of day, and then um, write some number sentences like eight minus five equals three or what have you. Uh, last year we did this for about a week, um, maybe even a little bit longer, but it got old really, really, really quickly. So we opted to bow out of the meeting book because Caitlin was over it and I was over it. We use our daily notebook instead of something like this. And then we have our teacher's edition. It's a big old thick spiral bound book. I appreciate spiral binding because I can keep it turned to whatever page we are on and not have to use bookmarks or lose little page flags or any of that mess. In the beginning of this, it will give you the table of contents, which explains to you what each lesson is going to be about. And there are 132 lessons in this particular edition or in this particular level for math two. And then this is something that I greatly appreciate. It gives you a list of materials. So it'll explain to you obviously that you need the meeting book, but we don't. And then it'll tell you if you need any specific manipulatives, you can buy a manipulatives kit from Saxon uh, that goes along with the levels kindergarten through third grade. We did not do that because I felt it was unnecessary. We have tons of little things that we can use, things like Shopkins, things like stuffed animals, Legos, just anything you have around the house, you can use as a math manipulative. So we opted to not do that. 
but it will tell you which worksheet goes with which lesson. If there is a fact sheet, it explains to you which fact sheet. Here on lesson six, we have fact sheet AA 1.0. It'll tell you to use pattern blocks with this lesson. And it'll go through and it'll explain to you, okay, lesson 10 is our first assessment lesson where you have an oral assessment where you ask your child whatever the questions are on the assessment page. And then you go through and your child completes the written assessment. And then it gives you what else you need after that. Usually you want to do those assessments closer to the beginning of the lesson when your child is their most fresh. <laughs> that seems to net the best results for Caitlin at least. And here's the other thing. They, they have their at-home manipulatives kit that you can purchase, but then they also have lots of activities within the lessons where you say need 10 stuffed animals or dolls or action figures or just some toys. And you're not gonna find those in that home study manipulatives kit. So to me, it just seems superfluous. And it goes through every single pay or every single lesson giving you all of that information. And this is the page where I got to copy all of those meeting strips. And then this is very helpful. If you are a, um, an advanced prepper, <laughs> this particular section is extremely helpful. It kind of gives you what to do in the night before, what you need to have on hand in order to make the lesson run smoothly. I found that if I didn't go through and at least the day before, like after we finished up the one lesson, if I didn't look ahead to the next gray box for the next lesson, our next day's lesson actually went more choppy. It was a little more frustrating. We were kind of not sure what to do. But if I took the time to read through this portion after the, the lesson was over for that day, it was so helpful. So we here you have the meeting and they tell you to begin each day with a math meeting where you go through your calendar, you go through the weather, you go through and you really discuss all of these things. Um, <laughs> this is where it got really tedious for us. So this is, we completely skip this entire portion and we get straight to the lesson. And so you go through and it gives you what to read in bold and what to do in regular font. So I'm gonna read all of this to Caitlin and she's gonna to respond to the questions. And I like the fact that they don't give you an explicit answer they're looking for out of the child because that really, um, that can hinder me personally if she's not responding in the way that I, um, ex like what the book expects her to respond. So that's really helpful. <laughs> And so again, we've got the next lesson. So after we finish lesson one, I'm gonna go through, turn the page to lesson two so I can have it already there for the next day. And I'm gonna go through and read this, make sure that I have all of those things on hand, and then I'm gonna call my planning or my preparation for the next lesson done. So again, we will skip the meeting. We will go on to the actual lesson. We will go through all of this script, and then she's going to take her worksheet and she's going to do her worksheet. It goes through and we, it tells you to do the side A together. And then you, it tells you that you can go through and do side B later in the day. Caitlin likes to just get it done for the most part. And it also goes through and it gives you the answer key to the worksheet. If we skip ahead to a lesson that actually has a fact sheet. Okay. So here again, I, after lesson seven is done, I'm gonna go to lesson eight's gray box. I'm gonna look at this, make sure that I have everything on hand, and then move on for the day. We will avoid the meeting. We will go through the lesson portion. And then it has this class practice area, and obviously Caitlin is the only pupil in her class. <laughs> so she and I will just go through and we will do you know, we will refresh on whichever facts we're working on and then we will do the fact worksheet. She will do this actually by herself and I like, I don't set a timer for her, but I do set a stopwatch so that she can see how long it's taking her to recall those facts so that maybe she can work a little more diligently or maybe she can try to beat her own time. I find that with a countdown timer, 
it, it's too stressful <laughs> for her, but if it's counting up, she's less likely to get frustrated. And that's also not something they necessarily recommend or uh, dissuade you from doing, but it is something that um, we found that helps Caitlin. So then you go through and you solve all of your fact sheets, you check the fact sheet and see what the score was, see what you need to work on, and then you go through and you have your child complete worksheet A and B. And this is just one page, which is what she loves about this particular curriculum. It's not a six, six sheet lesson or worksheet packet that she needs to get through because there's a lot of pictures and a lot of color all over the pages. She likes the fact that it is a single piece of paper, front and back, and it's very clearly laid out for her. So this book goes through that entire <laughs> set of lessons all the way through 132. And I'm excited about this this year because we get to go into multiplication and division, which I think she will really enjoy because it's very logical. And that's the end of the book. So there we have it. Math 2 from Saxon.